Hi, this is Kathy from Dr. Michael Workman's again, and today we have the pleasure of doing an assessment on Dr. Workman's face. And we're going to talk about some of the things we talked about in our earlier video, static lines, lines of expression, volume loss, um, and kind of how those come into play on a real person. So if we look at Dr. Workman, first I'll tell you that we treated him probably six months or so ago. We gave him some Botox and we gave him um, a little bit of Voluma, a, a dermal filler. But I will say Dr. Workman is not the most compliant patient. He, um, <laughs> he doesn't follow up really well. So um, today we're going to kind of talk about some things that have happened since we saw him six months ago. First, we can expect our, our Botox or Xeomin to last anywhere from three to four months. Um, some people will say, well, mine lasts six. We know that the actual physiologic action is three to four months. And the, some people will have more muscle atrophy and they'll have kind of an effect for longer. But you can plan to retreat between every four, three to four months, um, unless you're one of those lucky people. Um, also, we did uh, add some volume to Dr. Workman's mid face here. He was quite a bit saggier, and this side's looking still pretty good, but he's lost a little more volume on the, this side. And it's pretty subtle. I don't know if the camera totally picks it up. So today, we're going to treat this side with a little bit of Voluma. And we'll probably do a little bit more on this side, but for purposes of the video, we'll, we'll film this side. Um, now, let's watch as he animates. And Dr. Workman, can you furrow your brow like you're mad at me? There you go. So he has these lines here. He's got these muscles called corrugators that pull in and help bring that brow in and down and a muscle here called a procerus. So we do five small injections. Today we'll be using Botox um, to, to soften this muscle activity. Now, You'll notice at rest, Dr. Workman has some horizontal lines on his forehead. And I have a lot of patients, men and women, who come and say, gosh, I hate these lines on my forehead. But when I look at Dr. Workman, one of the things that I see is that he has a lot of these lines at rest because he's holding his eyebrows up. He has a mild eyebrow ptosis or drooping of the brow. And some of that is just his congenital nature. Some of that is that he might have spent a little time unprotected in the sun and has not taken extremely great care of his skin. Not me. <laughs> so, long story short, if I really wipe out this muscle activity, doctor, can you raise your eyebrows up like you're surprised? This is your frontalis muscle. And yes, I can totally relax this, but what's gonna happen, this is the elevator of the brow. If I totally relax this, and smooth that out, his eyebrow is going to be a mustache. It's not going to be good. So we have to tread very cautiously here. Now give me your best Hollywood smile, Doc. There you go. Got a little bit of crow's feet. This muscle here is called your orbicularis oculi. It's a sphincter muscle, very much like your lips. Make a big smoochie. There you go. So any muscle that's a circle constricts. So when we're treating crow's feet, we're treating the outer portion of that muscle and allowing that to relax so that we don't have quite as much puckering of the skin there. You can use a similar technique for a brow lift to get a little bit of elevation in the brow. And with Dr. Workman, we're probably going to go all the way around the orbicularis to kind of relax some of this and maybe give him a little lift to help with that brow ptosis. We're going to do a very light treatment across his forehead because we don't want to risk that brow ptosis. For most clients, especially with someone with a forehead like this, we might do somewhere between three and four units to just kind of put a toe in the water to make sure that the patient will tolerate that treatment and then we can build on that and like I said I hope to be your long-term provider so that we can come up with a plan that's customized for you um, so with that said let's get this party started <laughs> rock and roll yeah so we'll start with his Botox and get that going and I will t share a little secret that not the world knows, that Dr. Mortman is not a huge needle fan. So for him to um, tolerate this little demonstration is a, a big move on his part. And I'm very proud of him for being brave today. Might give you some chocolate when we're done. Oh boy. <laughs> 
Things are looking up. A little sucker for being a good boy when you have yeah. your shots. So we're going to okay. cleanse the skin with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Fortunately, he didn't wear a lot of makeup today. <laughs> Sometimes we have to take some of that off. Is there anyone you don't use Botox on in terms of allergies? Or um, With Botox, there's real low instance of allergy. Anyone with any sort of neuromuscular disorders, um, Guillain-Barre, myasthenia gravis, multiple MS, um, we would not use Botox or Xeomin. Uh, there's another neurotoxin called uh, Dysport that part of the protein that stabilizes that is a milk protein. Mm. So a person with a milk protein allergy, Dysport would be contraindicated. Um, we never treat pregnant or nursing women or anyone who's attempting to get pregnant. There are no FDA studies about aesthetic treatments with pregnant women, but there never will be because who would take that risk, you know? Um, that's the time to just relax and be a mama. All right, so go ahead, doctor, and relax, and okay. just kind of bring your head back. Bit. Yep, there you go. And we start with one tiny injection. Close your eyes between the eyebrows, and here we go. Poke. And he's doing awesome. On women, we start kind of a ballpark of 20 to 25 units for the glabella, which is what we call this area. For men, like Dr. Workman, I've treated him before and I know that 25 units is a drop in the bucket. So we're treating him with 50 today because he's got a really strong musculature of his face. Yeah, I think one of the concepts we like to tell patients is that um, the muscle is similar to a gas tank, and some people have bigger gas tanks, yep. and we actually, uh, we don't know until um, after we've filled up the tank how much you'll use, so. Yep. Uh, go ahead and furrow for me. And we have you animate a little bit so we can see exactly where, it, go ahead and relax, exactly where those muscles are pulling from. And we do this you know, there are, you know, any, any procedure is not without risk. And um, one of the potential risks with Botox is drooping of the brow or eyelid. The way we prevent that is, first and foremost, I know what I'm doing and inject you properly. And um, then you, as a patient, don't rub, massage, stand on your head do anything crazy for at least four hours after treatment. Because we want the product to stay where we put it. We're injecting in specific muscles and we want that product to stay in those muscles. I think another teaching point, and it just uh, uh, came to me, is we don't like to have people take aspirin or anything like Motrin or ibuprofen yep. that will cause you to bleed. And I do take a baby aspirin a day and Actually, I forgot to tell her so I think I But you're doing really good. Bruising. You're not br Oh really? Okay. Nope. And typically with Botox, if we see a bruise, it happens instantaneously. Okay. Sometimes with the dermal fillers, we'll see, you know, you, the bruise will continue to, to grow. Um, part of the reason I think usually with the Botox, if we get a bruise, it's because we've nicked a little capillary or a little vein and it instantly leaks. And we usually see it almost instantaneously. So we're going to just tippy toe across his forehead. Go ahead and relax. And I'm going to stay really high on the forehead because I know he's using this part of his frontalis to keep those brows up so that he can have his eyes wide open when he's doing surgery. Yeah, the other thing at some point we're going to probably switch over to part two here so that yep. we can get um, the whole thing in. And we'll make part two your cheeks. Okay. And here's a poke. And when we're done, typically with a new client, we'll do a treatment and then I like to have them follow up in one to two weeks and we can you know be incredibly critical if it's not exactly what you want it to be if you feel your brow position is off too high too low we can always make micro adjustments in your treatment to accommodate for that and that again comes with being your long-term provider and friend that we always come up with a plan that's going to work well for you 
Last thing we're going to do is this crow's foot over here and maybe a little bit of lift in the brow. So we're going to go right into the tail of the brow here, poke. And you are doing awesome. I'm not going to inject him at the arch of the brow because he's male and an, a highly arched brow is not incredibly masculine. Go ahead and smile for me. Let's see where the base is. There we go. With men, we do our Botox a little differently around the eyes and uh, brows especially. And also, cheeks are a little bit different on men because we don't want to give him a feminine cheek. We want him to stay the manly man. All right, and that will conclude. Most of his treatment will go on and off camera, treat the other side of the crow's feet, and then we'll rejoin you soon for the uh, volumization of his cheeks. Thanks.